So one of the things directed graphs are really good at is showing uh, when there's a flow from one vertex to another. And in this case, our vertices are football teams. And the reason we might use a directed edge is because uh, at the end of the football ge game, one team could be the winner. Um, I suppose you could also have a tie, in which case maybe you have a uh, an edge that has an arrow on both sides, uh, or maybe just an undirected edge. But these are all games where one of the teams won. So for example, the arrow flowing from Ohio State to Alabama represents a game where Ohio State beat Alabama. And our goal is we want to rank these five teams from first to fifth place. Um, and we could just go by the record, but for example, look at Ohio State. Ohio State had two wins over Clemson and Alabama, uh, and yet they were beaten by Oklahoma and Notre Dame. So they had a two and two record. Uh, if we look at Notre Dame, they also had a two and two record. So they beat Ohio State and Oklahoma, but were beaten by Alabama and Clemson. And when you're dealing with a sport like football, where there's really not that many games, if you only went by the record alone, uh, you'd run into ties all the time, uh, which is a problem when you come to the end of a season and need to determine a specific ranking to see who plays in the championship games. So what we have here is, is these five teams, and we're going to try to set up the total one and two stage dominance as a way of ranking them. There would be many other ways of ranking the teams, uh, but this is one method we're, we're taking a look at. So the first thing we need to do is fill in this chart. Notice that Alabama is not going to play Alabama. Clemson's not going to play Clemson. So these on the diagonal here are all going to be blank. Uh, however, for all of the rest of them, we can score how many one or two stage uh, influence or dominance the team had on, on the other. So for example, let's start with this cell right here, Alabama versus Clemson. So we're looking at Alabama and we're looking at Clemson. So one stage dominance would mean that all the games where Alabama actually beat Clemson, and there were none of those. They only played each other one time and, and Clemson won. However, Alabama could still score something here if they beat a team who beat Clemson. So let's look at the teams Alabama beat. They beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma did not beat Clemson. They beat Notre Dame but Notre Dame did not beat uh, Clemson either. So Alabama has a score of zero, one and two stage dominance over, uh, over Clemson. Now we're looking at Alabama over Notre Dame. So s notice that we're consistently always starting on the left side here and seeing how much influence they have over the team that's listed up here. So Alabama over Notre Dame, they do have a one stage there, so there's one. Do they have any two stage victories? Well, they also beat Oklahoma, but Oklahoma didn't beat Notre Dame, so we just get the one from Alabama beat them directly. Um, and let's see. Let me let me jump to another one here. Ohio State versus Alabama. Let's take a look at this one. So Ohio State did beat Alabama directly. That gives them one point here. But they also beat Clemson, who beat Alabama. So they have one point from their direct influence over Alabama. But they also have a second one from their two-stage dominance over Alabama, because they beat Clemson and Clemson beat Alabama. So because of those two different one- or two-step paths from Ohio State to Alabama, we would give them a two in this ranking. So I'd suggest you go ahead and pause this video, see if you can fill in the rest of the chart, and then unpause and compare your results. Okay, let me show you what I came up with here. Um, okay, at this point, we need just to total up the total dominance, one and two stage dominance that we have. And that's fairly simple. Um, so for Alabama, we're just looking, they got zero points against Clemson, one against Notre Dame. Uh, when I say points, I mean total one and two stage dominance uh, wins here. So we basically have one plus two plus two. 
So their total one and two stage dominance was five. Clemson's going to have two plus two plus two plus three. So that'll give them nine. Notre Dame is going to have six. Ohio State would have seven. And Oklahoma would have five. So when we go to the ranking then, it's just a matter of um, looking at their total one and two stage dominance points from highest to lowest. So Clemson would be ranked one there. Uh, second place would be Ohio State. Third place with six points would be Notre Dame. So let me just point out there that even though Ohio State and Notre Dame both had two and two records, two wins, two losses, uh, Ohio State came out ahead of the ranking once you started to look at two-stage dominance. In plain English, even though it was a two and two record, the two teams that Ohio State beat were better than the two teams that Notre Dame beat. Okay, and number four, we have a tie now between Alabama and Oklahoma. So I'm just going to put Alabama and then also number four, Oklahoma. So even with this, this method, we could still run into ties. We're not going to run into it as much as if we just go with record. Uh, so if we wanted to resolve those, we could potentially look at three-stage dominance. Or maybe we take the one-stage dominance and make it worth more than the two-stage dominance. Maybe every one-stage win is worth two points, and every two-stage win is just worth one point. Um, there'd be various ways, depending on what we think is really important uh, for showing which team is stronger overall. All right.